we feel out of control and we feel like our life is threatened. So we're trying to control our environment, control the people around us. In my head. Hey everybody. So tonight I wanted to talk about trauma and how we sometimes hurt people unintentionally as a result of having gone through trauma. So why do we do that? What's going on there? Let's discuss it. All right, so a quick recap of what trauma is. Trauma is any time that you feel like your life is being threatened or maybe you've witnessed somebody else's life being threatened. And that is very vague. And I have a whole series on trauma if you want to learn more about it. Um, just understand that that's very vague and a lot of people actually go through trauma. I looked it up before I left. I did my homework and it is seven out of every 10 Americans will develop post-traumatic stress disorder after witnessing trauma and 8.7% of Americans will witness trauma at some point in their lives. So it's a high number of people. It's very common and I also have a little bit of a suspicion that it's maybe a little bit more common than we realize. Um, only because of the way that we classify post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, and if we add on top of that, that there's also uh, acute stress disorder, which is the same thing basically, but it lasts for only a month. You know, it's something that's fairly normal to experience in our lifetimes as human beings, trauma. Trauma is any time that you feel kind of threatened, like your life is in danger. And if you go on to develop post-traumatic stress disorder symptoms, that's when you start to have things like flashbacks or maybe emotional flashbacks. Things from the past basically get stuck in your memory and the fragmented memories that are in your brain wind up affecting how you react to the world now because you still feel like your life could be threatened and anything that triggers those traumatic memories um, and it doesn't have to be something that's conscious that you're fully aware of, but let's say somebody, uh, a dog attacks me and I see a dog. I may not even remember that a dog attacked me, but the sight of the dog might bring up the PTSD response, stimulating my flight or, um, fight or flight response in my body, getting me highly aroused and ready for action. And that can play out in the way that we interact with people in the world. So that's what I want to clarify here. Basically, when we've gone through trauma, we are reactive to things. This is what our survival system is built for. When we feel threatened, we learn what it's threatening. Our body viscerally encodes that through traumatic memories, and those traumatic memories in a semi-automatic way guide how we react to things that remind us of that memory to get us quickly out of danger or get us braced and ready to fight back as quickly as possible and we we have that as a defense mechanism and that defense mechanism shows up in a lot of different weird ways um so we sometimes externalize our symptoms and we sometimes internalize our symptoms when we've been traumatized externalizing would be basically pushing them outwards, blaming them on outwards things, the people around us, our environment, our government, or social forces, or anything outside of our control. And then sometimes we'll internalize our symptoms. And in the case of PTSD, that would look something more like blaming ourselves, getting depressed, shutting down our emotions, and feeling terrible basically about ourselves. Both of these behaviors, again, these are results of an automatic system semi-automatic. I say semi-automatic because we do have some control over it. We can modify it. You can heal from PTSD. Um, but it's, it's a system that's designed to protect us. So when we see something that is triggering to us, let, let me give you an example. So for myself, I was bullied when I was a kid and I was typically bullied by straight males. I don't know what their sexual orientation was, but at the time it was always assumed that they were straight males. So when I'm around straight males, I immediately have a higher level of discomfort than I would around somebody else. Now this is not a PTSD reaction in my case, but um, so maybe this isn't the best example, but it's, it's like a mild example of what's going on here. So whenever I, I approach like a group of straight males, let's, let's put it that way, because I do get a little bit triggered by a group of straight males, then I will 
brace myself like my muscles will tighten up and I'll just feel ready in case something happens I become hyper vigilant I'm paying close attention to what's going on around me and I'm ready whereas for other people they might see a group of straight males and be totally they may feel actually more comfortable because there's a group of straight males around for me that doesn't feel comfortable because I was attacked at a time when I wasn't so able so equipped to handle myself and so equipped to to fight back because there was other stuff going on in my life we're not going to get into my whole life history here but there was an aspect to that that was traumatizing and I have um, those automatic feelings that prop up somebody else may get attacked by a woman and whenever they encounter a woman a solo woman one-on-one -on -one in a room that might be enough to kind of set them off so if they are a person who is externalizing their symptoms they may get ready to attack that person maybe that's their lover maybe they're in love with a woman and this is where it gets really weird maybe you're in love with a woman but a woman is triggering for you and maybe that triggering feeling feels exciting to you and is what attracted you to them in the first place because it can feel exciting if we're not really in tune with what it is uh, and it might seem dramatic and enticing and sexy in a way maybe like we're powerful because we have this adrenaline coursing through us but if we're in love with a woman and we're also triggered by that woman then what's going to happen is if we're an externalizer we may um, if we're a heavy externalizer, we may attack them, we may hit them, um, we may throw things at them in, when we're in an argument, or if we're not so heavy, we may verbally abuse them, we may do things to try to manipulate and control them because we're blaming them for our problems. Um, so that would be an externalizing behavior as a result of trauma, and again, it doesn't look like trauma to us because we, we're protecting ourselves but we don't even necessarily know what's going on. We don't realize that we're protecting ourselves and that we're reacting to this feeling that's triggered by an old memory because there's nothing necessarily like visually happening in our head. We're not like seeing the original woman that attacked us. We just get this feeling around women. Um, if you're an internalizer, well, obviously, okay, let me first say that obviously if you're doing those things, that's going to harm the other person, right? Attacking the other person, manipulating them, not giving them auto autonomy, that's going to hurt them. And I should mention that both of these kinds of ways of dealing with trauma are ways of trying to get back into control because we feel out of control and we feel like our life is threatened. So we're trying to control our environment, control the people around us, control ourselves. Now, if we're an internalizer, Something that we may do is we withdraw from that person. We start to stonewall them, which is very bad for relationships. We may start blaming ourselves for everything, and that may be why we withdraw from them. We may start seeking love from outside of the relationship because we're trying to bring back that feeling of security and safety, but we're also blaming ourselves. So we're looking for an out, basically. We're withdrawing, we're avoiding. They're both avoiding. They're both avoiding that feeling of not being safe. That hurts the other person because we're withholding our love from them. We're withholding the connection and the trust that we have in them, with them and in a relationship. And so internalizing, externalizing, it doesn't really matter. When we've been traumatized and we're reacting to that trauma, consciously, unconsciously, whatever, we're harming our relationships. We're harming the people that we're in those relationships with. So we should be mindful that when somebody's gone through trauma, they're going to exhibit some of these behaviors. And these behaviors, when repeated over time, can traumatize somebody else, especially if that person is a parent and they're doing these behaviors to a child. That could be something like neglect in the case of withdrawing, maybe physical neglect, emotional neglect, or it could be something like abuse, physical abuse, emotional abuse when it's externalized and of course isn't, isn't limited to children. This can also happen in adult relationships and this can be traumatizing. What I'm trying to get across here is that somebody who's been traumatized very likely can go ahead and traumatize somebody else not realizing they're doing it because they're just being defensive in their own mind and they're protecting themselves and they're not realizing 
the effect that their actions are having on the people around them because they're constantly in this defensive mode and it's all about them and protecting themselves. We see this, you know, with what's going on in the world today with terrorism, um, which, by the way, any large violent crime is terroristic. I don't really know why we give a specific label to whether it happens because of one religion or another or one race or another or whatever the hell. Any, any act of violence is terrorizing. It is traumatic, so I don't know why we use that label. But anyway, my point is that we see this going on around the world where one particular group is blamed for a terrorist act and then everybody gets a little heightened awareness and a little afraid and a little shaky about that group and then we pinpoint them and we start enacting things like travel bans or we start stopping them on the street and and we start to terrorize them we terrorize them when we do those things we are traumatizing them we're taking away their autonomy and power and control in the world and making it more unsafe for them to exist so we need to be aware of that when we implement policies um, but again th in a, a more close to home more likely scenario for the average person we can see this in familial abuse you know with child abuse specifically so be aware of that if you're new here please subscribe and after you hit subscribe hit the bell icon to get notified of all my videos i have a patreon page if you would like to support me i know i say that at the end of every video but a lot of people don't hear it somebody who's my friend um hello if you're watching <laughs> who probably watches quite a few of my videos didn't realize I had a Patreon page so this is why I mention it all the time for those that don't know. There's um, extras that go up on the Patreon page. You can support me over there if you like what I do here on this channel and I'm actually working on an extra currently to add to that Patreon page so um, be on the lookout for that if you are a patron. It may take a week or so to get up. Hopefully not that long but we'll see. Uh, if you like mental health videos again subscribe and let me ask you guys have you noticed, maybe the people who've been traumatized, um, have you noticed that you've done some of these behaviors and have you noticed the effect that it's had on other people? I know that you've been hurt and I know that some of these behaviors even hurt yourself because they hurt your relationships with people and it makes it harder to get support because you push people away, not even intending to push people away. So have you seen this kind of dynamic going on between you and other people and what do you think about it? Are you working to heal so that you can improve your relationships with people? Let us know in the comments. I just want to open a dialogue so our community can discuss these things and learn from each other. And as always, I want to thank you for being here with me and joining me on this mental health journey.